Okay, so here's the first example on conditional probability. So suppose that we sampled people and we've organized the data in the following table called a contingency table. And we've arranged the data according to whether the person was male or female. And we asked each person whether he or she was right-handed or left-handed. So for example, the proportion of our sample that were female and right-handed is 0 0.45. And we have see the column totals and the row totals. Of course, it has to add up to 1, which means that this is 100% of our sample. Look at the first question. We are asking from our sample, if we randomly select a person, what is the probability that we have a male given that the person, she is right-handed? So let's see. Now we'll let M denote the event the person is a male, F the event the person is female, R the event the person is right-handed, and L the event the person is left-handed. So we are asking, if we select a person at random, what is the probability that the person is a male, so P of M, given that, so conditional probability, given that we know the person is right-handed, so given R. Well, now we're good to go. Remember that if you ask P of M given R, so given that we know the person is right-handed, what's the probability that the person is also a male? Well, it is P of M intersects with R over P of R. Well, this is the probability of the person being a male, so being in this row, and right-handed. So a male, oops, male and right-handed, the probability of this event is 0 0.41 over the probability of being right-handed. Well, these are the proportions for the male that are right-handed and the females that are right-handed. So in total, 0.86% of our sample, or sorry, 86% of our sample, or 0 0.86, give us the proportion of the people that are right-handed. And if you take your calculator and compute 0.41 divided by 0.86, you get approximately, oops, approximately 0 0.477. So about 47.7% of people will be male, given that they are right-handed. Well, let's look at part B. The probability that someone is right-handed, given that the person is a male. So now we're flipping this upside down. We're asking, what's the probability that someone is right-handed, given that we know the person is a male? Well, as before, this will be P of R intersects with M divided by P of M. Well, P of R intersects M is the same as M intersects R, so the probability of this is just 0.41 divided by P of M. What is the probability from our sample that someone is a male? Well, a male can be right-handed or left-handed, and the total proportion of male is 0 0.49. And once again, if you use your calculator, 0 0.41 divided by 0 0.49 49, you get approximately 0 0.837. So if you know someone is a male, the odds of the person being right-handed is about 84%. If you know someone is right-handed, the odds of that person being a male is about 47.7%. Let's look at C now. We're asking the probability of someone being female, given that she is left-handed. So the probability of someone being female, given that we know the person selected 
is left-handed. So as before, this is P of F intersects with L over P of L. So we look for the proportion of people that are female and left-handed. Let's go back up. Female and left-handed, 0 0.06 over the probability of someone being left-handed. So let's see. The left-handed people are either male or female, and the total of left-handed people is 0.14. And if you compute this, you get approximately 0 0.4285, you can say 429. So the last question is, are the events being a female and being left-handed independent? So how do we check this? Well, let's see. We already have done all the work. It's just a question of putting the pieces together. Look at the event P of F given L. So given that the person is left-handed, the probability of the person being also a female is about 0 0.429. So about 43%. Let's now look at just P of F. What is the probability of someone being a female? Well, a female can be right-handed or left-handed, and the total is 0.51. So the probability of someone being female from our table is exactly 0 0.51. So now look at this. The question was, are the events being a female, so F, and being left-handed, L, are independent? So does the occurrence of one affect the occurrence of the other? And as you can see, the answer is yes. If you know nothing, and you ask, what's the probability of selecting a female from the sample? The answer is 0.51. But if you know the person is left-handed, and you ask what's the probability of getting a female, the probability changes. So the fact that L has occurred before F changes the probability of F. So you see that the occurrence of L has an impact on the probability of the occurrence of F. So the implication here is that the events F and L are actually dependent. Or you can say are not independent, same thing.